Wow, what a powerful worship. Welcome to Charisma Bellevue. Welcome to our first time guest, our missionary from Thailand. I heard that Faina is a missionary to, for how many years? 15 years. There's a connection here. We have two sisters who's uh, also serving and been to Thailand or Thailand. So wave your hand over there. So this is that's Nina and uh, uh, Tara. Welcome to our Charisma Bellevue and to the Manuel Tiki family and to Tita Lulu. Welcome to our church here. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to see Ivy tonight. We prayed for you last night. How's the baby? Good. Good. So we're believing for uh, the exact time, the due date to come. Can we just uh, lower down my mic? It's too, too loud. And uh, today we are starting a new series, uh, November. I know November is a time for us to slow down and Thanksgiving month. And I believe I was led by the Lord just to go and study the different attributes of God. Because my goal as your pastor is to bring you closer to Jesus. How many of you would like to be closer to Jesus? Amen? Yes. Amen? That's the secret of our success in our life if we are closer to Jesus. And how many of you know it's harder to get closer to Jesus nowadays, right? There's a lot of distraction, temptation, and you need to press on and pursue. You cannot just go driving and put on a cruise control mode. No. Sometimes you need to hit first, second, third, fourth, and accelerate and go all in and all out like what we have sang tonight. I'm running to your arms. And I'm just so amazed when the Holy Spirit uh, drops a song in Sharon's heart and the message in my heart because I'm talking about the immutability of God, meaning God is never changing. And we sang the song to them. tonight. If you're listening to the lyrics, you're declaring God is never changing. You are good forevermore. You reign forevermore. You are my peace, God, and the riches of your love will always be the same, will always be enough. So that thinking about God is never changing. At the screen tonight, there's a fill in the blank called God is. And that is very, very important because how you fill in the blank will determine how you will relate with your God. That's why if some of you are feeling a little bit negative, you might feel God is away from me or God, has, God is uh, not giving to me. And so those things will affect us. A.W. Tozer said this, and I want you to read this together. Let's all read this. This is a good quote. Let's read this together, Charisma. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let's read it again. What comes to our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So today, I would like to introduce to all of us one of the attributes of God is He is immutable. I want to say this. God is my rock solid. Everybody say this with me. God is my rock solid. I want to introduce a story, true story, really strange. There's this guy by the name of Sergey. It's hard for me to pronounce his uh, name. So, uh, but her, his name is Sergey. May 19, 1991, he was sent by his country, USSR, to explore outer space. Supposedly, he should only be there for two months. But something bad happened. The timing was so bad. When he received a call from the control center on Earth while he was orbiting up in the sky, look at the, the, in that, in that space, in that uh, uh, shuttle, that USSR collapsed and then hang up on him. Meaning to say, his flight back to Earth was canceled. So next time you complain if your flight from L.A. to Seattle was canceled, this guy, his flight back to Earth was canceled. Not until for a year. So he holds the longest human being, according to the Guinness World Record, staying in outer space. Then March 
to, uh, 1992, he went back to earth, but it's totally different. He left Leningrad and came back to St. Petersburg. He left USSR, but USSR is gone. He returned to Russia. His flag changed, his president changed, his address changed, everything in his life was changed. And how about you tonight? Do you feel sometimes like that, the Russian cosmonaut that everything in, around us has changed, right? Uh, check this out. Year 2001, these are some of the stuff that we don't have here. First of all, we don't have an iPod. Year 2000, we don't have an iPhone. We don't have an iPad. We don't have an iTunes. We don't have the Harry Potter. We don't have Lord of the Rings. We don't have the Lost TV series. We don't have the American Idol show. We don't have the widescreen TV. We don't, ha we don't have Blu-ray disc. We don't have Facebook. We don't have Google. We don't have Twitter. That was just 15 years ago. How did we survive? <laughs> I was telling my kids, you know, you should respect your parents. We graduated without the help of Google. <laughs> Do you still remember that we need to read the books and go to the library and, and look at uh, and scan? There's no computer. You could just type in and go to a search engine and Google what you want to know. No, but that was just 15 years ago. Check this out. I came to America 21 years ago because my wife petitioned me, so we're just celebrating our 21-year anniversary. And I look at the map of Seattle. Look at this. This is Alderwood, where our church is located at in the early 90s. You cannot see Alderwood Mall there. You cannot see Best Buy there. You cannot see Charisma there. You cannot... It's, it's nothing there. It's just like a farming community. And where I live right now in Highway 9, when we first moved there, at first we, we it one lane road and everything changed. Now the hills turn into a subdivision and we're we'll driving by the Buffalo Farm along Highway 9. Now everything has changed. We're driving along Highway 9 and looking at the marijuana farm. <laughs> 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 Different, and they call it green salvation. How sad, right? They call it green salvation. And whoa. What happened, right? And it's kind of stressful, right? We are living in a very fast changing world. And sad to say, it's not just change happening around us. How about change happening about us? When was the last time you looked at the mirror and you were shocked? <laughs> what happened to the hair? <laughs> Where are those lines coming from? And I'll be honest, please, I'll, I'm, I'll honest. I'm an old man. I'm telling you, speaking to you right now, I'm not alert in the morning. For me now, coffee is a matter of survival. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not alert afternoon. My idea of happy hour nowadays is taking a nap. When I was growing up, when my mom told me, take a nap, oh, I don't want to take a nap, right? You're kids, you're but now, take a nap, boom, I'm there. <laughs> my, my daughters are telling me, Dad, please take a nap before you snap, because they know they get, I get easily. By 9 o'clock, I need to be in bed. How about you, Sister Ampi? You're strong, huh? <laughs> but I'm just, and, 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 and wow. This is happening right before me. And sometimes if I could just press the reset button with my kids too, now I have a daughter who's going to college, one's turning 18, and one is uh, soon graduating. Whoa, there was a time in our lives as a married couple, they're like a shadows. Wherever we, we go, they follow. Now, they have their own schedule. <laughs> And that's part of mature, growing up and things like that. But whoa, I'm not ready for this, right? And sometimes we wonder, is there still something out there that's permanent? Is there still something 
reliable, that will never change? And if that is your question today, where do we find stability? God is immutable. Everybody say with me, God is immutable. Don't uh, be uh, caught up with the big word immutable. In, in theology, we call it immutable. But in English, uh, another word for that is just unchanging. Everybody say, God is unchanging. unchanging. Let's read this together, Charisma. This is an awesome verse. James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadow. Let's read that verse again. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from the Father of the heavenly lights. Read it. One, two, three. Who does not change like shifting shadows. It's like shadows. They, they shift. They follow an object. But God says, He is the Father of lights, the Creator who does not change like shifting shadow. It tells to us that God is rock solid and permanent. I like the rendering from the Philip version. Let's read it from the Philip version. With whom there is never the slightest variation or shadow of its inconsistency. Aren't we glad that's our God? Amen? That's our God? He, he ne he'll never change his mind. He never, uh, he, he don't have no mood swings. Uh, he's, he's good before. He's good today. He's good forever. That's why we say God is good all the time. Because the immutability of God tells us that God is rock solid. Now, the word attribute, we're going to talk about for the four weeks, this attributes of God. Attribute basically means something true about God that he has revealed in any way, everybody read this again. Something true about God that He has revealed in any way. Here are the four major attributes of God. Let's read this together. He is omnipresent, meaning God is everywhere. His omnipotence, meaning God is all powerful. Sovereignty, meaning God is ruler over all. Immutability, meaning God is unchanging now please don't get this in a negative mindset so god is unchanging or god is not moving meaning to say it's like a statue that is deaf to the cries of his children no don't look at that way no that's not the point of immutability what immutability means about god is this he will never change his character he will never change his personality he will never change his quality that is rock solid. That's why if you read the Bible, when David is saying, you are my strong tower. You are my fortress. What is David crying out? You are immutable, God. You are rock solid. I run to you and I'm safe. You're my refuge. That's what God is, is telling us today. Four anchors. We need some four anchors in this fast-paced and crazy world that's changing right now. Number one, God's power is unchanging. Everybody read this with me. God's power is unchanging. Let's read this together. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out, but you will remain the same. Let's read it together. One, two, three. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain they will wear out, but you remain. So what God is saying to us, the creator and everything that he created will one day expire, wear out, will disintegrate, will just cease to exist. If you, that's why if you notice, you will hear threats of global warming. You will hear threats of... Uh, of catastrophe, the world is really dying. You know, according to science and astronomy, the sun, which is very important, the sun has used its fuel or energy. And they are saying there will come a time the sun will just run out of fuel, run out of energy, and the earth 
where we live in will die, will collapse because we get everything, our power from the sun. And then the, uh, the science is saying, we have one billion years to prepare for that. <laughs> but what that says to us, the word of God is true. Because God says the heavens, the work of his hands, the sun and all of it, they will one day perish. But there's one that will not perish. And that is the S-O-N. Amen? The Son of God, our God. Now, God's power will never be exhausted. Church, can you please take away from your mind? Sometimes we have this poverty mentality. We think that the favor of God will be exhausted. And when we hear testimony of God's favor, oh, I received God's favor, I got God's favor. And sometimes you ask, what about me, God? Is there something left for me? Come on, church, God's favor will never run out. And God's favor has no expiration date. Come on, somebody. God's favor will not uh, diminish. He has a favor for all of his children. Amen, somebody. Now, he, he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't ha lose his power. You know why? Because he's powerful. He said, he never slumbers, nor what? Sleeps. Let's look at this verse. He never slumbers, nor sleeps. Let's read this together. He never slumbers or sleeps. You know, I like ma what Max Lucado uh, wrote about God's power. I want to quote it. This is what's uh, according to Max Lucado. God has never said the words, I'm feeling strong today. God never pauses to eat as the angels to cover him while he takes a nap. He never takes time out or take a vacation. He never puts the prayers of China on hold while he answers the prayers of America. No. Amen, somebody. The word of God says, let's read this, Isaiah 40. The Lord is the everlasting God. He will not grow tired or weary. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power. That's your source. When you feel weak, when you feel tired, you know what's the verse for that? Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you are tired and weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. When you feel afraid, you know what the Lord says? Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. When you feel like you're burned out and running out, what does the Lord says? Be still and know that I am God. God is just saying to all of us, I'm it. Everything that you would need for life, I'm it. I have the source and I am your source. Because my power will not run out. Amen, somebody. He will never have a short circuit. He will have no glitch. He will have no viruses that will shut down his power. No, God's power is forever. And not only that his power is rock solid, what about the way he treats you? Love. God's love is unchanging. Let's read this together, church. Jeremiah 31.3. I have loved you with an everlasting And I think it's only God who could do that, right? Human love has expiration date. That's why we see a lot of breakdown and breaks up and uh, splits. But God's love has no expiration date. Everlasting love. You know, I, I read this. I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. It says here, I cannot brag about my love for God because I fail Him daily, but I can brag about His love for me because His love never fails. I just want you to rest on that. Two disciples. One, he called himself the rock. His name is Peter. The other one, he called himself, I'm just the one Jesus loved, John the Beloved. Peter was strong, uh, macho, and on the go, and always uh, all in, all out. And sometimes he told the disciples, uh, you will betray Jesus, but not me. And he bragged his love for Jesus. But when push comes to shove, when his love was tested, he crumbled because it proved that he loves himself more than he loves Jesus when he denied Jesus three times. 
That, on the other hand, John the Beloved never brag about his love. But you know what he's bragging about? Jesus loves me. The one Jesus loves. And when Jesus was crucified, the rock was not there. But Jesus was there, right? And it's a good illustration for all of us. Don't brag about what you can do for God. Just brag what God can do in your life. Don't brag about how much you sacrifice for God. Brag about the sacrifice of God in your life. Don't brag about how much you love Jesus. Brag about how much Jesus loves you because that love is unfailing. A good illustration about this, it happens to human love too. You know, I'm a Laker fan before even uh, Kobe Bryant. I like the, the Showtime, the 1980s, Magic Johnson. This month is a 24-year anniversary of Magic Johnson when he was diagnosed with AIDS or HIV positive. And this is the story. He was telling this story in an interview when he was about to tell his wife. During that time, the wife is pregnant. And now here comes Magic Johnson. He was crying and he has a rehearsed speech and then he just collapsed in the presence of his wife. And he just asked for forgiveness I betrayed you, I committed adultery, I had this infectious disease called AIDS because I was promiscuous. And according to Magic Johnson, he was just waiting for his wife to say, that's it. This marriage is over. And, and, he, and he was prepared for that because he deserved it and said, I don't want my wife to suffer. If he wants to leave me, divorce me, that's, I, I, will, I, will, I won't give him a hard time. And according to Magic Johnson, after he cried and he confessed to his wife, the response of the wife is, is this, there's this, like a big uh, slap on his face. <laughs> and then said, no more talk about this. I'm not walking out on this marriage. I'm not divorcing you. The more we need each other and the more we need God. And right there and there said, come on, let's kneel down and let's pray together and praise God. That was today is 24 years now. Uh, as we all know, the wife is not infected with AIDS, and we know the baby is normal. And according to Magic Johnson, he was telling the story, the reason I'm still alive today, of course medicine, of course God, is because my wife did not leave me. He sta she stayed with me. And of course, the, the, the wife was asked, how can you do that? This guy betrayed you. And then he said, it's not me. It's the love of Jesus in me that I could express that love to him. And that's the reason why I'm telling this to all of us. Sometimes we feel like Magic Johnson in the presence of God. We're waiting on, on, on God to, okay, God, I deserve hell. I, I, I broke your, my pride. Okay, God, I deserve punishment. Okay, God. And God is saying, don't st stop that nonsense. I'm not going to walk out on you. I'm not going to divorce you. I'm not going to stop loving you. I gave my only son for you while you were still sinners. And that will not change the fact that even though sometimes you behave badly, I still love you. Aren't you glad? And that God is love. Amen, somebody. Everybody say, God is love. love. Let me explain that, why that's very important. God did not say, God has love. But, but if God says God has love, I don't want that. But God has love probably before he doesn't have love. He didn't say God will be love. Oh, that's the future. But what the Bible says, God is. That's his nature. That's his operating system. The reason why God loves, because that's he is. That's his nature. You cannot stop him from loving you. Listen to this verse. Your love never changes. And then in Romans chapter 8, 38, let's read it together. Nothing can separate us from his love. So that's your anchor. If some people have walked out in, of your life, I don't want you to know there's someone who always walk in and will never leave you. If your supporters stop supporting you, I'm telling you, God is your supporter and he will always provide for your need because he is love. Number three, 
the reason we have this anchor, not just His power, His love, what about His Word? His words is unchanging. Let's read this together. The grass withers and the flowers fade and the word of our God. The flowers fade. No matter how beautiful those red roses, right? When, that, when you take it out from the ground, later on it will dry it up. What God is telling us, His words will not dry up it's always fresh. His words is alive. In fact, the Bible is the only book that when you read it, the author, the Holy Spirit is present. Amen? Check this out. The Bible is the only book that never gets obsolete. You go to college, a book of 1980s or 90s to year 2000. Now it's outdated. It's, it doesn't work. You buy a computer, there's an operating system. It's, it doesn't work anymore. It's obsolete. You have to upgrade. But God's word doesn't need an upgrade. Amen, somebody? Because God's word is perfect. And God's word is unchanging. The word of God stands forever. In fact, Listen to this, Matthew 24, 35. Let's read together, Charisma. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words. So that's our anchor, the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Now the question is, do you believe the promises in the Bible? Yes. What are the promises? My, I don't know. Yeah, that's our problem. That's our problem. We don't know. That's true. I like. I said just honest, very honest. My wife will always tell the young, the, 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 the young people, the worship team. Did you know that there's seven thousand promises in the Bible for us? Seven thousand. And then she would ask them, "How many of those seven thousands do you know?" And come to think of it, yeah, how many promises do we know? Maybe one or two or three or four or five. We need that because it's just like this. If I need to call Sister Ampi, even though I know you, but if I don't know your number, I cannot connect with you. If I, I know Brother Sack, but I don't know his number. If I, I need help, I, 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 okay, how can I connect? The promises of God is just the numbers of God that he gave out. At least we should know some of the address or the date. The Bible says, Hercules 10 verse 5. Hello. There's no Hercules in the Bible, okay? <laughs> At least we should, know, we should know who's saying that and where is it coming from. Amen. Amen, somebody. Listen to this. The Lord always keeps His promises. He is what? Gracious in all He does. The Lord is a promise maker and He is also a promise keeper. And I can tell you stories upon stories how the promises of God came to reality when I thought nothing is happening. I challenge all of us, go deeper into the promises of God. Claim it. You know, I, I look at the promises of God like the stars in the night. When you go out tonight and you see those stars, it's just like picking a star of the promise of God and believing that for you. And I challenge you, when the, when the cloud is dark and it's so, not at night it's so dark, you see the stars are glowing. I picture that in your mind, it's just like a promise of God. That there's something out there that's glowing and the promise of God in the midst of your dark situation in your life. And I say, God, give that to me. And then just capture that star and and, and, and claim that word of God for your situation. My dad, when I was growing up, always quote this verse to my family. And it forever etched in my heart that I could not forget it. It is a promise of God in numbers. I want you to read this together with me. God is not a man that he should not lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should change his 
mind. He will not back out on His promise. Amen? And the promise I want you to carry tonight, as we all stand up tonight, is this promise in Hebrews 13.8. Would you please read this together with me? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today. Read this again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today. That's the immutability of Jesus. It's the same yesterday, same today. He'll be the same tomorrow. You don't need to second guess God. Was God good for you in the, in the yesterdays of your life? Was God there? Would God be here with you in this time? Would God will be with you in your tomorrow and your forever? Yes, He is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's this old song that we used to sing. It just tells us about God is unchanging. As we receive communion, I just want us to stand up on your feet. And I would like to ask uh, Koy Homer and uh, uh, Steve will come to you and serve communion and wait for one another. And would you reflect on this Thanksgiving month? Reflect on the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been and forever will be. Summer and winter, it is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses. Let's worship Him tonight. Let's declare His faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, Thy hand had provided. Hallelujah. Great is Thy faithfulness, Lord, unto He pardons our sins. Pardon for sin and death. Peace that endureth Thine own dear presence To cheer and to guide Strength for today And bright hope for 
for tomorrow. Blessings all mine. Blessings all mine with ten thousand. Yes, sing it, church. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. For I received from the Lord the night when Jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he said this is my body which was broken for you do this in remembrance of me let's partake the symbol of the broken body of our lord the slip of the cup of salvation the blood of the lamb the symbol of the blood of jesus in the same manner he took the cup saying and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. That whenever you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake the symbol of the blood. The riches of his love will always be there for us and when we feel afraid god is your tower that you run and hide he is the rock solid where you are protected he is the unchanging one he is immutable his power will not lose its strength his love has no expiration date and his word will stand the test of time and eternity and his promises are yes and amen in christ so tonight, can we just take this moment and just run to Him and don't mind the time and just immerse in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I'm running to Your arms. I'm running to Your arms. The riches of Your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever rain. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. Let's declare it tonight that God is good, He's good all the time. You are good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love. On display for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in 
Declare it tonight over your battles. Run to Jesus. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your Light of the world forever. The same, my love. The, the, the other name, but Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. the best club of praise in the house tonight is God good charisma is God faithful church is God a rock solid he is yesterday today and forever Lord we just thank you in the midst of this fast changing world we're living in Sometimes, Lord, we're stressed out even to keep up with it. But we have someone that we could hold and anchor our life. And that is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Lord. You have all the power that we need. You have the love that all we need. You have the word given for every situation. You have a promise that we could claim and will carry us through this journey, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. You are a strong tower. The righteous run and we are safe and secure. And Father, tonight in our family here at Belby, Lord, we pray for Ivy, Lord. Thank you for this promised baby you have given to David and Warren, to David and Ivy, Lord. And I just pray, oh God, for this season, Lord, of waiting, 
the labor pain. I just pray, God, for Holy Spirit to hover, hover over Ivy and David, that instead of stress and fear, there'll be peace and there'll be calmness, Lord, knowing, Lord, this is God's blessing and baby for their marriage. And I even call this baby now blessed in the name of Jesus, Lord. And everything will be safe and delivery, healthy baby. And this baby, Lord, who have a history from you and will become a history maker for you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and the honor. Amen.